Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at ice. <laughs> it is the middle of the winter for us, so that would be a fun time to take a look at some of the tactical implications of uh, dealing with big nasty ice flows, especially when it comes to things like submarines and ships. Obviously with aircraft you just kind of fly across it and you don't have to worry about it very much. Uh, ground units unfortunately at this time have no ability to cross the ice, so uh, you can't just kind of leave Greenland and kind of scoot scoot over here to northern Russia, that's just not a possibility. So one of the things you need to know here is if you look really carefully at our map, there's this little yellow line that just kind of chills. This is our ice cap line. Now, the interesting thing about this ice cap line naturally is, of course, if you change the time of year, the ice cap line isn't necessarily going to adjust itself. It's just going to always be sort of chilling there no matter what you're doing. Now, that line is kind of interesting because uh, one of the fun things is, is if you zoom in here, it becomes really hard to see that line. If you zoom out, it becomes a little easier. Now, what is the immediate impact of it? Well, the first one is navigation. So if I grab myself my lovely FFG 36, this is the Underwood here, and I go ahead and press F3 to plot a course. If I were to double click like that, you will notice the game does not allow me to plot a course. Instead, if I want to do a conventional course, I can just do a conventional course like that, and you'll see that it has no issue. We basically can't force this ship directly into the ice itself. That's just not mechanically possible. However, if you happen to have a ship, uh, let's say maybe the Arctica, this is an icebreaker and it has no difficulty working with the ice. As a matter of fact, if I would press F3 and go ahead and pick something in here, you'll notice it doesn't care the fact that there's ice there. And as a matter of fact, you can make full speed through this ice, which is something I find kind of interesting. Now, of course, it doesn't matter if I just kind of crank this up to full and I'll pop him in the ice itself. You will see that there is no issue with his ability to basically cruise through all this. It's actually pretty easy. I actually find it neat. You get a little like wake and everything like that. And obviously he's making a ton of noise. Now, the other practical implication of this, of course, is it's very difficult to drop things onto the ice. Now, there's some interesting other problems this is going to cause, but let's say I wanted to do an ASW mission. I'll control right click. Uh, let's go ahead and define a layer. I'm going to go drag a box over here. I'm pretty sure there's a typhoon in there. I would know I put it there. So I'm going to go ahead and do AS, control F11. And what I'm going to do is grab myself a uh, patrol. We'll do ASW patrol here. Find a boat. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Go ahead and add my C sprites. Now, my C sprites are great uh, because, of course, this is the HF model. Yes, I know. Don't, don't pay no attention to the dates here. But one of the things about the C sprite is they carry two things that are very useful. First of all, dipping sonar. Second, sonar buoys. Now, watch what happens when we attempt to find the submarine inside this region. Actually, there's one thing I'm going to change real quickly here because I always make this mistake. Oh, uh, let's see here. Mission settings. Ah, here we go. Station altitude should be minimum altitude. Uh, we want to keep these things darn low, usually but lower than 150 feet. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to allow them to use their dipping sonar because, you know, why not? They're pretty useful. Go to general. I'm just going to confirm that dipping sonar is enabled, which it is. And we go ahead and unpause. Now, watch what happens. So my submarines, um, of course, are, he's uh, looking, by the way, right now. So here comes my little helicopter. Uh, he flies into the region of uh, search mode. He drops down about 55 knots. He drops down to a uh, very low altitude. Okay, for the record, helicopters don't cruise at 12,000 feet. That's just not a thing. But anyway, he's going to come down here. And, uh, you know, this seems like a really good spot to drop a dipping buoy. So I'm just going to right click on him, ASW. And I'm going to go ahead and drop an active. They have die cast. I push the button and as you'll observe no son of a come shooting off the side because it was go thunk onto the ice and it basically be chilling there uh, literally and of course it does nothing for us so unfortunately my asw mission got a little more challenging now what about submarines well submarines have new problems i'm sure you've seen those old videos where the submarine breaks through the ice that is exceptionally thin ice and also you tend to damage the submarine when you do that but one of the things you'll notice is my sub down here is a sea wolf chilling at minus 213 if i say hey i want you to come to the surface watch what happens here he scoots up and he goes bonk and basically runs into the ice at minus 82 feet so he has no ability to get high enough to even stick his periscope up or any of his sensors. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the scenario options, I have to be very careful of this as a designer, by the way. One of the options here is communications disruption. Do you realize the problem that creates? You can no longer talk to your sub if you have this button checked and you happen to be under the ice. So you can't do it. You have to wait until they find a safer spot to basically talk to you. Talk about autonomy of mission. Oh, my gosh. So the next interesting thing we're going to have to deal with, of course, is going to be if we do find something underwater that seems interesting to put holes in. So let's go speed up time a little bit here. I'll give it a little bit of moments. Ah, we found something. <laughs> hey, the typhoon is where I expected it to be. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Now I've got a, a little typhoon here. We have himself at a range of uh, five meters. And of course, I'm sitting there going, man, it'd be really funny if I had a rocket torpedo. <laughs> nope, can't do that because it would get stuck in the ice when I shoot it. 
So the cool thing here is you have to actually get old fashioned. So if I want to go ahead and try to get this goblin, Typhoon, I think does 35 knots, if I recall correctly. Oh, what's our range here? That's about five nautical miles. That's a, oh my goodness, that's like a 40 mile chase. Yeah, we got to sneak up on this guy. All right, let's go pick up a couple knots here. One of the great things about the Sea Wolf is it's so stupid quiet. So we'll go just underneath the layer. We're going to come down a little bit here. We're going to creep up on this guy. There we go. There we go. That's better. There. Now we're making 46 decibels here. We're getting a little closer. We actually have a better idea where he is. I'm glad we didn't take that shot. It's about seven nautical miles away, and we're behind him, uh, which means we can be a jerk. <laughs> yes. So uh, this is nothing, nothing beats the uh, cheap shot here. Actually, what I want him to do is not cavitate. Of course, we could set a maximum depth if I absolutely had to do that. Uh, sprint and drift. Cavitate. Do not cavitate. There we go. He'll slow down a little bit. This is the greatest thing about the Sea Wolf, though. This thing is like, it's like cheat codes. Oh, uh, there we go. Sneak up. We're making 30 knots right now. <laughs> just creeping up on him. Of course, if he had anything else, we got to slow down just so we can take a quick listen here. Let's uh, slow down a little bit here. Uh, 20 knots is still pretty darn fast. Slow down. There he is. Oh, we're a lot closer than I thought. No, no, we're about where we expected. <laughs> This guy has no idea. All right, let's go all out here. Let's go maximum depth, and uh, we'll come sneak up on him at full speed here. Go, 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 go. Keep in mind, he does have torpedoes. They will shoot back at us. There we go. We're only making 88 decibels, and we're, like, doing 30 knots. This is absolutely fantastic. Got to kind of sneak up here. Might as well do a little bit of a red Octobering here. There we go. I'm making uh, about 28 knots. That's it's pretty pretty comfortably fast here. Right, let's drop down to creep and take a listen. There he is. Oh, I'm surprised we're not able to... Well, we know he's in SSBN. All right, let's skip to the fun part. Oopsies. The auto thing. I fired a torpedo. That was not a good one. You have fire when ready. Fire, fire. Now, the interesting thing here is that you get a kick out of this. If I look at my range, we're only about a mile, 1.6 nautical miles away. And the joke is, he didn't detect us yet. Now he'll detect us because uh, we just fired two torpedoes at him. Now, one of the fun things that always happens here is you'll notice you can't hear him because my torpedoes are making so much racket right now, but he's going to pick up as much speed as he possibly can. But unfortunately, it's the Typhoon. He has a lot of inertia. So if you'll notice, he's actually trying to like kind of bounce off the surface here. It's not going to matter. Oh, that was clean. Nice. Go see Wolf. So as you can see, the ice presents some kind of interesting problems for us. So obviously, surface vessels can't really operate in it. If you're trying to shoot things in and out of it, it's not going to work very well. But it also means that submarines have a really, really fun time of it. Because a lot of the really, really dangerous anti-submarine weapons can't be used. And things like the frigates that usually launch them can't touch us. Enjoy.